Good evening. Please come to order the October 22nd, 2012 special town meeting is now in session. I'm going to go sort of slowly because we have a lot of people at the check-in table, so I want to make sure we can get everyone in here so they don't miss one minute of the excitement. But I thought I could at least start doing some of the preliminary work because this is a special, we don't have a lot of the sort of pomp and circumstance that we all like so much at our annual. The first thing that I'm going to do is read the return of the warrant. Pursuant to Chapter 39, Section 10 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth and the Warrant of September 12, 2012, I have notified and warned the inhabitants of the Town of Nantucket qualified to vote in town affairs to appear at the times and place and for the purposes within mentioned by posting said notification on September 21, 2012 at the Stop and Shop on Pleasant Street, the Grand Union on Salem Street, the Town and County Building at 16 Broad Street, and upon the building and boards at the corner of Main and Federal Streets and Syosconset Square. Sworn to under pains and penalties of perjury, Catherine Flanagan Stover, Constable. Hopefully you all have your warrants. We have three small changes to the Finance Committee motions that have come up since the warrant was published with those motions in it. The first change is to Article 2. Article 2 starts on page 2 of the warrant and continues on to page 3. We are striking in its entirety the sewer section that's the second row down on page three as shown on the screen. So that transfer, sewer transferred 931,458 from article four of the 2005 special town meeting is stricken. That means that when we vote on the Finance Committee's motion on Article 2, we'll be voting on it with that language stricken. The next change is in Article 9. This is a new motion. In place of the motion that appears on page 8, which was a move not to adopt, the Finance Committee motion is moved that Chapter 41, Board of Sewer Commissioners, Section 41.3b, Syosconset Sewer District of the Code of the Town of Nantucket be amended by adding the following parcels to the Syosconset Sewer District. Three parcels on map nine, parcels um, 83 at 79 Sankety Road, parcel 112 at 76 Sankety Road, and parcel 114 at 80 Sankety Road. You should also know that the selectmen are recommending, the selectmen acting as sewer commissioners are recommending this motion, as a result, it will require a majority vote. We also have a new motion on Article 10. Prior motion was moved not to adopt the article. That motion is now Move that Chapter 41, Board of Sewer Commissioners, Section 41-3A, Town Sewer District of the Code of the Town of Nantucket, be amended by adding the following parcels to the Town Sewer District. And they are Map 30, Parcel 71, 78 Cliff Road, Map 41, Parcel 105, 1 Dairy Lane, Map 41, Parcel 103, 28 Dairymore Road, 
The parcel shown as 4117 at 34 Derrymore Road is not included in this motion. It's being omitted. 4118, 36 Derrymore. Map 30, parcel 72 at 38 Derrymore. And map 30, parcel 72 at 38 Derrymore. And again, the Board of Selectmen are recommending that motion. As a result, it will require a majority vote to be adopted. Because this is a special town meeting, certain articles will require a, that a quorum be present of the 8,383 registered voters qualified to vote at this um, special town meeting. 5% is 420 voters. 3% is 252 voters. Articles that deal with the appropriation of funds require a 5% quorum at a special town meeting under our bylaw. Articles um, that require a transfer must have a 3% quorum. The articles in this particular warrant that require a quorum are articles 1, 2, 3, and 5. They require a 5% quorum, and Article 4 requires a 3% quorum. Hopefully, as you came in, you were able to pick up a copy of Nantucket Traditions and Procedures. This is a supplement to the Blue Book, which is town meeting time. Town meeting time is the um, parliamentary procedure book that we follow for town meeting. It's less, um, I guess it's more user friendly, let's say, than Robert's Rules. And it's the um, book of parliamentary law that we use under the charter for our town meetings. The traditions and procedures are things that are just specific to Nantucket. This is a little booklet that Mark Arnold, who was my predecessor, put together, and we've updated it over the years from time to time. And I'd ask for your unanimous consent to adopt this um, Nantucket traditions and procedures as our supplemental rules of the meeting. Thank you. The next thing we're going to do, I'm going to get a pen. We're going to call the articles. What that means is I'm going to run through the articles. If you want to discuss an article or make a motion on an article, then you should call it and I will put your name down next to it. And when we get there, we'll get your question answered or you can make your motion. If you agree with the Finance Committee motion, then you don't need to call the article. It will just be voted in a group with all the uncalled articles all at once in accordance with whatever the motion of the Finance Committee is. Anyone can call an article for discussion. You don't have to be, you, you just have to be a voter. You don't have to be a sponsor or an official of the town. Anyone can, can call an article for discussion. Does anyone have any questions about that before I get started? Okay, and I'll run through a couple of times. Article one. Article two. Article three. Article four. Article five. Ms. Gookin? Six. Seven. Eight. 
And can I have your name, please? Lucretia Voigt. And which number was that? Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Mr. McLaughlin? Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay. So, as I see it, I have three articles called. Ms. Gukin has called Article 5. Article 5 had a negative recommendation from the Finance Committee. Ms. Gukin has given me a positive motion, which I will be um, able to put up on the screen. Ms. Voigt has called Article 8. Article 8 has a positive motion from the Finance Committee. So I'll be recognizing Dr. Mulcahy for the purpose of making that motion. And Article 11 is a motion not to adopt. That's been called by Mr. McLaughlin. Mr. McLaughlin, will you be making a positive motion on Article 11? All right, well, <clears throat> I guess we'll see you when we get there. <laughs> on Article 11, I will be recusing myself, and Mr. Kopko will be acting as alternate moderator in my place. Ms. Stover, do you know, do, have we reached our quorum? Do they know to tell you? Okay. Are we close? Oh, 532, then we're, we're more than close. Okay, well then let's get right to it. So the articles that haven't been called, I'm gonna run through them. If you have a, had a change of heart, please call out. Otherwise, when I get through reading them, we are going to vote on those uncalled articles and dispose of them. So the uncalled articles are one, two, three, four, Oops. Ms. Dunton, which article? I can't see them far. Oh, one, okay. Thank you. All right, so Ms. Dunton on one, two, three, four. Ms. Gukin has called five, six, seven, Ms. Voigt has called eight. Nine, 10, Mr. McLaughlin has called 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. Okay. Article three. Okay, Dr. Mulcahy. Okay. Any second thoughts? Okay, good. So we will now vote on articles 
two, four, six, seven, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and twenty one. And the motion is move that the following articles be voted as recommended and or amended by the Finance Committee or as recommended and or amended by the Planning Board as printed in the Finance Committee report with technical amendments brought forward during the course of the meeting. Two, four, six, seven, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, Fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, and twenty-one. Dr. Mulcahy, is that your motion? It is, is there a second? Motion is made and seconded. Now, I think that does require two-thirds. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. That carries unanimously. Thank you. Just a note on two-thirds votes. There's a bylaw that we adopted, I can't remember how many years ago now, that does allow me to declare a voice vote has met a two-thirds vote. Um, I only do it if it's extremely clear that it's been met. Otherwise, we would be doing hand counts. And in some cases, um, town council and or bond council have recommended that we that we do hand counts, so we'll do hand counts there as well. So we will go directly then to Article 1. Article 1 starts on page 1 of the warrant. Continues on to page 2. The Finance Committee motion is as printed in the warrant, and I'd ask for your unanimous consent to waive the reading of that motion. Thank you. And I'd recognize Dr. Mulcahy for the purpose of making the motion. So moved, Madam Moderator. Is there a second? Motion is made and seconded. Uh, Dr. Mulcahy, do you, does the Finance Committee wish to speak, or should I go directly to Ms. Dunton? Um, why don't you go to Ms. Dunton first? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Dunton? Mr. Goodman, can you get Ms. Dunton? No, no microphones, huh? I'm so used to seeing you there with a microphone, I didn't realize. Essentially, it is what is being asked for is an increase of $2 million. From the $5 million eight to $7 million eight. Would you like, would you like me to have Dr. Mulcahy explain to you what they're doing here? Do you want to do that? Yeah. Sidebar. No, no. Okay. Dr. Mulcahy, can you explain what's happening here and then maybe we can get out the question? Sure, I'd be more than happy to. Um, welcome, thank you all for coming. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay, great. We are here from, on this article is to th get our finances in order so that we can get our uh, budget certified. The fiscal year 2013 budget was approved at the annual town meeting this past spring. 
At that time, there was a strong possibility that due to certain uncertainty of airport expenses, a special town meeting would be necessary, and here we are. Due to state re regulations, revenues for the coming year can only be budgeted at a level based on the previous year actual revenues for enterprise fund departments. So no matter what revenues come in, enterprise departments are limited to the previous year's budgets for state purposes. This year, this regulation has re resulted in expenses being higher than revenues for some enterprise departments. A prime example involves our airport. Our airport is in the business of supplying fuel for planes, among other revenue producing items. Because revenues and expenses for fuels can fluctuate at certain times of the year, following this regulation can be a challenge for budgetary purposes. In addition, debt service costs were determined after the last time we met for existing approved projects that were not reflected in the budget that you voted on. There is legislation that has been proposed to lower the fuel volatility to avoid this problem in the future. And that was also voted this past spring. What you are asked to vote on is, to rela is directly related to these charges. So again, the difference in fuel revenue and expenses and debt service costs that were finalized after last town meeting. The airport shortfall, as it's called, will be covered from the general fund and will be expected to be repaid to the town over the next few years. The sewer department has a shortfall of $500,000 due to revenues budgeted less than expenses. This will result in a reduction of expenses to balance this department's budget. It is expected that retained earnings will be used to increase expenses back in the spring. So, and what that's saying is that we expect the profit or the money left over for the spring will cover the expenses we're asking you to cover now. The Wanakana Water Company took in $269,000 of, rev of less revenue than anticipated. Expenses will also be decreased accordingly. Expected retained earnings when certified will be used to adjust this at town meeting. And the other enterprise departments, the Sconset Water, the Solid Waste, and our Island Home, revenues came in higher and will be added to the individual budgets. So I hope this tries to clarify what we are asking you to vote on. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Ms. Dunton, maybe. So this two million, close to my, uh, this two million dollars in it is in addition to what, the two and a half or two and a quarter that town meeting approved in March? Yes. Okay, I think that's sufficient clarification. So it'll be about four million five if this is approved this evening for, the, for this year. For the airport, the total budget is that? No, the total additional funds the town is giving to the airport from the March town meeting, which was, I can't remember, two and a quarter or two, mil, two and a half million, and then this is an additional two million. So it'll about, be about four million five for the entire year. Yes, Dr. Mulcahy? Um, if you look down here, you saw me hesitating. That $2 million is not actually accurate. The, the actual number is $1,060,000. And there are much more uh, financially astute individuals than I am to explain the details. But it, it, it suffice it to say that what you're being asked to vote on for the airport is $1,060,000. And I'm, and I'm going to look down at the Airport individuals and nod your heads? Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, Article 1 requires a majority vote. A yes vote will adopt the Finance Committee's motion. A no vote will defeat that motion. 
All those in favor? Oh, Ms. Dunton, yes, sorry. Mr. Bouquet, that is really confused me because you're saying we're only being asked to vote for a million something, but that... That is correct. Um, what you're looking at on the numbers is there are, some, I believe, some offsets. And I would ask moder matter, uh, Madam Moderator if I could um, direct that inquiry to the airport manager, Tom Rafter, to sure. give a better I, explanation. I think town council might also have a... Oh, great. Oh, that, I didn't see town council's hand. I, can I just... Yes, please. Mind? Thank you. Uh, Madam Moderator, my name is John Giorgio from Town Council's office. Um, let me see if I can explain this. The, um, although the budget is being shown for the airport as increasing by $2 million, there is revenue that, that, sets, uh, that offsets some of that. And the, the big volatility here is um, fuel prices. So because of accounting rules that apply, that uh, the Department of Revenue imposes on enterprise funds, the town is only allowed to count as revenue the amount of money that was raised um, in fees last fiscal year. Um, we are anticipating, the Airport Commission is anticipating, however, that due to um, revenue from fuel sales, there will be a larger amount received than what was received last year. The problem is that the Department of Revenue does not allow you to count that when you submit uh, your, your tax rate for certification to the DOR. So what you see in Article 1, it looks like it's a $2 million increase in the budget. Uh, in fact, it is a reallocation of funds. There's additional revenue coming in. But the bottom line is that the shortfall that cannot be accounted for from enterprise fund revenues is in fact $1,060,000. That money has to be raised, and the only place to raise it is on the tax levy. But as Dr. Mulcahy said, once, we, once the town receives a certification of the retained earnings in the enterprise fund, that those funds will be available at the, sp at the spring annual town meeting for reallocation. It can be used to pay back the general fund for this $1,060,000 subsidy um, and for other purposes. So in the spring, at the spring town meeting, there was a total subsidy for the airport for fiscal year 2012 of about $2.5 million. That was for debt service, it was for unpaid bills, and it was for a shortfall in last year's operating budget. So you take that 2.5 million, we're now going to add through Article 1, 1 million 60,000, so it's about a $3.5 million um, debt, if you will, that the airport commission will owe the general fund. And my understanding is that the selectmen, the airport commission, the finance com committee will be w working as soon as the certified retained earnings are received, they will be working on a plan for a structured repayment of that general fund subsidy. Um, now it may not, it probably won't all be paid in the spring, but there will be a plan in place for the airport commission to repay the general fund for the advances that have been made both last spring and now at this special town meeting. Thank you. I'm gonna let you have one more follow-up, Ms. Dunton. No fair. Anyway, yes, I think that answers my question. Thank you. Thank you. Move to move the question. Let's vote. Um, all right, this does require a majority vote. We're voting on the motion that's printed in the warrant. A yes vote will adopt that motion. A no vote will defeat that motion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Aye. That motion carries by a majority vote.
Article three. Uh, Madam moderator, uh, in light of article one passing, I will withdraw that call. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak on article three? Okay, well, we're gonna have to get you to make the motion anyway, Dr. Mulcahy, so the motion is as printed on page four of the warrant. Um, as for your consent to waive that reading, thank you. And is that your motion as printed in the warrant on page four on article three, Dr. Mulcahy? It is, it is, Madam Moderator. Is there a second? Motion is made and seconded. This requires a majority vote. Yes vote will adopt the motion as printed in the warrant. A no vote will defeat that motion. All those in favor of the motion on Article 3, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. That carries unanimously. Thank you. We do have a few non-voters with us tonight. I just want to make sure that we're clear. As I understand it, everybody who's sitting over on kind of the wings of, this, of the auditorium are non-voters. So if you're a voter and you're sitting over there, you should be in here. And if you're in here, with a couple of small exceptions, which I'll tell you, and you're a non-voter, you should be over there. Um, there are some town um, consultants who are down here on the, on the front row um, in case we need them, and they are under the watchful eye of the town clerk and have promised not to vote. Article 5. Article 5 appears on page 4 of the warrant, continues on to page 5. The Finance Committee motion was not to adopt. I do have a positive motion from Ms. Gukin, the article sponsor. That motion is as follows. Moved that $620,000 be appropriated for professional services for design, permitting, construction, supervision, engineering services, and other related professional services, and for construction of a community-scale wind turbine similar in size and specifications to the Nantucket High School wind turbine to be located at the Madiket Landfill, all with such expenditures to be made by the town manager with the approval of the Board of Selectmen that to meet this appropriation, the treasurer, with the approval of the Board of Selectmen, is authorized to borrow $620,000 under General Laws Chapter 44 or any other enabling authority, provided, however, that the amount authorized to be borrowed shall be reduced by the amount of any gifts or grants received by the town for this project, and provided further that this vote shall not take effect until the town votes by ballot on a referendum question to exempt from the limitations on total taxes imposed by Proposition 2 and a half, so-called, amounts required to pay the principal of and interest on the borrowing authorized by this vote, pursuant to General Laws Chapter 59, Section 21CK. Is that your motion, Ms. Gukin? Okay, motion is made. Is there a second? Motion is made and seconded, Ms. Gukin. Can they put my other slide up? Okay. Hi, my name is Barbara Gukin. Is this too loud? <laughs> um, I'm a year-round resident of Nantucket. I've lived here for over 20 years, and I've spent that time um, serving on many committees and dedicated to helping preserve our year-round community. I think as a resort community, the community part of that is essential. Um, my proposal, which is up here on the screen, um, proposes to put a wind turbine at the, high, at the um, landfill exactly like the one that's outside this door at the high school. Um, it's been very effective. You can see on the size comparison chart the proposal that was before you for April town meeting this past April was more than twice as big as the high school wind turbine. It's the same exact turbine. Um, the way that the positive motion is worded is really just a whole bunch of legal talk that asks for you to do this. Um, the Northwind 100 is the same turbine that you see here. It's very quiet. It's designed with a gearless direct drive. Um, the 
wind speed at the dump is far superior than it is here. So the same turbine, even at the same height, would be far more effective. Uh, it's 7.0 um, meters per second at the landfill. We are already paying $76 million in cable surcharges that we all have on our electric bill. Right now, we've been paying those for quite a while, and we're going to continue to pay that cable surcharge until uh, 2046. Our current year-round ratepayers and the next two generations of islanders are going to be crippled by additional cable surcharges when we need a third cable, which is in the next decade, until 2063. I would love to see us avoid the third cable, not just delay it. And this wind turbine won't do either of those, but it will help. And I think if we do this and move forward with other initiatives, we can avoid forever, ever needing a third cable. So this is the proposal for right now. I'm going to bring three more proposals to town meeting in April. And some of those have to do with energy efficiency and um, other measures. They're not all wind turbines. I'm not uh, keen on seeing wind turbines all over the island. I think siting is everything. And I think the landfill is the right site. It's already a disturbed site. It's uh, not a pristine, um, his it's not a historic site or a beautiful view shed. It's the dump. Um, the next cable is going to cost between 50 to 60 million dollars, and that would be in addition to the surcharges we already pay. There would be an overlap, as you can see, by those two dates up there. So altogether, uh, that's a lot of money. We already have high electric rates, and then all of our um, surcharges double what we pay for electricity. You can see that on your own bill. Um, the town has already spent $172,000 on studies and permits for that larger turbine that was proposed and defeated. Um, most of those studies and permits can be transferred to this smaller project. There are other cost reducers too, and if you look on the left side under the photo, in case I run out of time, I hope you can see that and read it. Um, in 2009, Waste Options selected three sites at the landfill for town-owned wind turbines. And those, the clock is blocking a little bit of that. But at the bottom of that map, you'll see a little circle. It's not in a wetlands. You might hear people say that it is. It's not. Thanks for moving the clock. Um, and so you can see those three circles. The bottom one is where I'm talking about. There's a, a shadow study that has been done for the high school wind turbine that would transfer to this. There's a, uh, the shadow study does not reach any residential properties. Um, the composter at the landfill uses two million kilowatts of electricity per year. The wind turbine would, propose, would produce 298,000. So that's about 15% of the usage there. That's a dramatic reduction. People will tell you this is nothing but a drop in the bucket, but that I think 15% is dramatic. And there are the other numbers that show you the other cost reducers. The total savings would be $77,880 $77, per year. So I have one second to say thank you. Thank you. Ms. Palmer? Give it a second to recover. Okay. Thank you, Madam Moderator. My name is Karen Palmer. And the first thing we should all know about Article 5 is that it has had no thorough review done by anyone with authority to speak for the town. It has not been examined or vetted by the Board of Selectmen, the Finance Committee, town staff, town committees, because the proposal itself is incomplete and does not provide the data and analyses needed for any of these boards to be able to recommend to us, the taxpayers, that it is or is not sound fiscal and community investment. That said, Article 5 asked to borrow $620,000, which is less than the actual cost three years ago, 642, to install the North Wind 100. 
borrowing $620,000 for 10 years at three and a half percent as per the town budget office really means that our taxes are going to increase by roughly $900,000 to cover the project cost plus the borrowing cost. Article 5 claims the town will see 77,000 in annual revenue or savings offsets, but that's simply not correct. Those numbers did not include the quarter of a million it cost to borrow money, and key assumptions are too optimistic. For example, Article 5 energy cost is slated at 20 cents per kilowatt hour rather than the 13 percent per kilowatt hour used by the Energy Study Finance Subcommittee last winter. Example, Article 5 capacity factor is set at 34 percent, the highest feasible maximum, rather than the actual experience at the high school, which is about 22 percent. And the extra winds at the landfill do not account for that 50 percent increase over what we see in the ground at the high school. Example about um, the maintenance contract at $3,100 a year. It's really inadequate to fund the periodic overhauls, emergency repairs, and other upkeep that are required on an island that's 30 miles out to sea. And as to the studies and permits, every new commercial and municipal wind turbine must go through a permitting and approval process to comply with federal, state, and Nantucket regulations. Permits and studies done for the Northwind 100 three years ago at the high school, or last winter for the PW56 at the landfill, are not directly transferable to this proposal. Some data may be available, but new sound, flicker, engineering, environment impact, national grid, and wind analyses based on putting a Northwind 100 at the landfill must be completed. And when you adjust Article 5's optimistic claims, with realistic numbers, the potential revenues fall far short of what's required to cover the annual debt service and the cost of maintenance. Maintenance uh, by about $40,000 a year, and that's $400,000 over 10 years. That's a lot of money, and taxpayers are being asked to take a financial leap of faith. As to the landfill, the proposer um, admits that she has not talked with waste options management who holds the land lease and owns the composter to see if they would ever agree to connect the variable energy from the 100 kilowatt turbine that only supplies about 10 to 15 percent of what the composter needs to operate at any given moment to that equipment. Further, this afternoon at 4 p.m., Waste Options Management confirmed that they had been asked about three uh, turbine sites three years ago, but, quote, we never had any conversations after that Waste Options Nantucket has never agreed to anything Ray turbines. Now, let's address this issue of the third cable. Last winter, the town's energy consultant said definitively that the larger 900 kilowatt turbine would, quote, never, would have no value in deterring the need for a third cable, end quote. And on Saturday at Meet the Articles, Ms. Guggen agreed with that. Further, the North Wind 100 would only produce about one-tenth of one percent of the energy needed to meet peak um, needs in, in the high peak season, say, in August and in the summer. So this is not going to make a significant impact on avoiding the need for a third cable. The third cable isn't needed now. It's needed 10 to 15 years in the future, possibly. And the way that we avoid that is by focusing on conservation, by reducing our energy demand and being more energy efficient. Our island, our community, needs a comprehensive energy plan developed with broad input from residences, businesses, and community leaders. And I understand that process might begin this winter. We need to come together and make well-considered, balanced decisions for Nantucket's energy future. I ask you to defeat Article 5. Thank you. Yes, the gentleman up in the center. There's a microphone right behind you. And if you could I just identify yourself for the record. Sure. Uh, Burr Tupper. Um, just looking at the, the really well done tradition and procedures, I was wondering if the last speaker should have identified herself as a representative of Common Sense Nantucket. Would that qualify as, a, as an employed um, I don't know position? if she's employed, but were you speaking on behalf of Common Sense Nantucket, Ms. Palmer? 
I mean, I. Okay, she's a member, but she was speaking as an individual citizen. Would an individual be allowed a, uh, and this is just a question, but allowed a, a slide and a five minutes? Uh, an individual would be allowed a slide if it was given to me in advance. Um, also, people would be able to have longer time if they came to me in advance and we worked it out, yes. Thank you. Yes, the woman here in the, in the front section, if you want to stand up and identify yourself for the record. My name is Leslie Forbes, and I am vice president of the Mattacott Residents Association, which is one of the residents associations in Mattacott. Earlier this month, we surveyed our members on Article 5, and we got a 33% response rate. 92% of our residents said no to this turbine, and as a result, the board of our homeowners association voted to oppose the adoption of Article 5. Now, we, are, we do live in Mattacott. It's real easy to say, oh, those people out there, it's just nimbyism. This survey also allowed for comments. And of the comments we received, three quarters of them had nothing to do with flicker or noise or property values. They had to do with finances and the wisdom of this proposal. Just to give you a sample of them. A, the town needs a master plan, not a shotgun approach. B, there's a lack of verified information. There are missing costs. There's a lack of hard economic analysis. It's just a lot of hopeful wishes. C, this article is way too vague to be throwing this size money around. So with that, I, uh, I think that the Madigan residents are speaking uh, from a financial perspective rather than plain old nimbyism, and we would urge you to vote no on Article 5. Thank you. Okay. If there's a hand, I can't see it, so you're going to have to stand up right in the back. Yep, is that you, Mr. Whedon? I was curious about the uh, canvas back ducts that put in at the North Head Long Pond. Once things get a little colder here, will they be affected by this? Can someone address that as far as uh, migratory birds that come in and take a rest here on their trips? Will these turbines affect them? Mr. Blackshaw? <laughs> if there's anybody that can talk about the effects of mi migratory birds here, I guess it's, it's his eye. Um, there's really uh, no bird effects that we would consider. One of the things that was originally done with the other proposal was to look at long-tailed ducks, which are the main waterfowl that uh, attracts people's attention around here. Uh, and, they're, they're, and their migration patterns and daily movements were studied thoroughly and they're documented in the previous proposal. Uh, there are no endangered species that are going to be affected by that, so there's really no bird concern for this particular project. So if you do want to vote against it, uh, don't do it because of birds. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Goodman. Uh, there are so many questions about this. It, it's sort of a wish article. To, to my mind, so uh, I'd like to uh, table the motion, or ma make a move to table the, uh, the article. You're making a motion to table? Yes. That way you can look okay, at it in but, the spring. But, but you don't get to talk if you make a motion to table. You just get to make a motion to table. Okay, forget what I said. I make a mo mo motion to table the okay. article. Okay, that is a not debatable motion. It requires a two-thirds vote. 
the effect of a motion to table is essentially to kill the article for this particular meeting. There are circumstances in which motions to lay on the table can be brought back from the table, but that isn't really how we've operated with the motion to table. So a yes vote will table this article and end discussion. A no vote will defeat that motion and continue discussion. So all those in favor of the motion to lay on the table, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. No. That motion does not carry. Uh, Ms. Wheatley. Thank you, Madam Moderator, Nancy Wheatley, uh, Tom Nevers. I I'd like to thank Barbara Gookin for her devotion to these issues because um, environmental conservation and, and wind power and other alternative energy uh, sources, I think, are, are very laudable. But as I said at the town meeting, um, the folks in Madiket, who, for a much larger proposal, and this one is much different, really, really did ha would really have an impact on them. I think Ms. Guggen is going in the right direction, but I think she's brought the proposal forward too soon. And it would be helpful to come, and I think it's always helpful to come to town meeting with the support of your neighbors and the, and the, the various committees and boards and everyone in the community. So I hope we will see another proposal, and I hope it will have community support. But I can't vote for this one. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Schlesinger? You would like to go to a vote. All right. That's essentially the same as moving the question. So a motion to move the question is not debatable. That requires a two-thirds vote. The effect of a motion to move the question is to end debate on the main motion. We then go directly to a vote on Ms. Gookin's motion. If you defeat the motion to move the question, then we'll continue discussion on Ms. Gookin's motion. So all those in favor of the motion to move the question, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. Aye. Ew. All right. I believe that carries, but I know you're going to want a hand count. So all those in favor. No, you don't? OK. Good. Then that motion is adopted by a declared two-thirds vote. Now we'll go directly to a motion on Ms. Gookin's motion. This does require also a two-thirds vote. A yes vote will adopt Ms. Gookin's motion. A no vote will defeat Ms. Gookin's motion. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed? No. That motion is not adopted. Mr. Ramos, it wasn't even remotely close, but I'd be happy to have a hand count just to eliminate any question. All those in favor, let's try this. All, these, all those in favor of the motion on Article 5, raise your hands and keep your hands raised until the tellers have an opportunity to count your vote. OK, so now see? Now you can put your hands down for a second. All those opposed to the motion on Article 5. OK. I think we can agree that that is not a two-thirds majority in favor. Um, OK. Article 8. Okay, Article 8. Article 8 appears on page 7 of the warrant, continues on to page 8. The, it is a planning board motion. Um, as a zoning amendment, this will require a two-thirds vote. 
A yes vote um, would adopt the motion and a no vote would defeat it. I'm going to recognize Mr. Rector, Chairman of the Planning Board, for the purpose of making the motion as printed in the warrant. And I'm going to ask for your consent not to read the motion. Thank you. Mr. Rector, is that your motion? Is there a second? Motion is made and seconded. Did the planning board wish to say anything or should I go right to Ms. Voigt? Okay, Ms. Voigt. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Um, when the Zoning enforce Enforcement Officer position was created at town meeting several years ago, the intent was to create an autonomous position. This article takes enforcement back to the prior problems which led to the creation of the Zoning Enforcement Officer. The Zoning Enforcement Officer serves as a liaison between the policymakers and the public. And just as you would not want the police department, who is the enforcement arm of our laws, to answer directly to the legislature, who is our policymakers, so too is the relationship in this article flawed. The wording any building official will also open the process up to inconsistent enforcement and possibly enforcement which on its face may appear arbitrary. This could open the town up to lawsuits. If the problem that necessitated this article, if it's workload and timely enforcement, this article will not alleviate that problem. That is a management and staffing problem that has come about due to the staffing cuts at the town. An additional staff member would solve the problem without necessitating re rewriting the town's bylaws. If there's not an agreement to withdraw the article, I would propose an amendment that would take out the wording and any person within the building and within the planning and land use services department appointed by the town manager. Otherwise, I would ask that we vote no on this article. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so Ms. Voigt, I'm confused. Did you want to make an amendment or did you just want to have a vote? I, I don't get the sense they're going to withdraw the, their motion. So did you want to make an amendment or did you want to just have us vote on the... We can just vote on it. I was trying to be amenable and, and you know. <laughs> okay. All right. Ms. Gibson? Libby Gibson, town manager. This article is merely a way to make use of the town's inspectional services in a more efficient manner. We would propose that you vote yes on the article. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Snow. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Leslie Snell on behalf of the Planning Board and the Planning and Land Use Services Department. Approval of this article will allow the ZEO to become a role within the department rather than a specific staff person as currently structured. This will allow for staffing flexibility, increased efficiency, and better service to the public. The changes proposed are consistent with statutory provisions and will create an opportunity to assign the zoning enforcement officer roles to the most qualified staff people as determined by the town manager. In addition, this article provides clarification that the zoning enforcement role includes interpretation of the zoning bylaw, not just enforcement. I would ask that you support the planning board and approve this article as written. Thank you. Is there anyone else on this? Okay, this requires a two thirds vote. A yes vote will adopt the motion as printed in the warrant. A no vote will defeat that motion. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. No. Hmm. 
I would say that I need to do a hand count on that, sorry to tell you. So all those in favor of the motion on Article 8, please raise your hands and keep your hands raised till the tellers have had an opportunity to count your vote. Okay. All those opposed to the motion on Article 8, please raise your hands and keep your hands raised till the tellers have counted your vote. Okay, on Article 8, wait a minute, hang on just a sec.
Okay, on Article 8, yes, 327, no, 195, two-thirds was 390. The motion on Article 8 is not adopted. I did have a question that came from the back. Why was there no Pledge of Allegiance to open this meeting? Um, we don't generally do any sort of pomp and circumstance, even invocations or pledge to, to start the specials. So it wasn't any particular reason. We just don't generally do it. We certainly could if, for future meetings if people would like to. So now I'm going to turn the meeting over to Mr. Kopko for the purpose of handling Article 11. I do want to say that I had a note that Mr. McLaughlin wanted to withdraw his call of Article 11. But since Article 11 is the last remaining piece of business that we have, um, we really have no choice but to get the Finance Committee's motion up on the floor and take it to a vote and discussion if you want. So I leave you to it. Mr. Kopko with my thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Good evening, everyone. I'm pleased to be up here to help Sarah out with what will be our final order of business this evening. Um, Article 11 is before you. I'd ask for the consent of the meeting to waive the reading of the article unless there are objections. Hearing none, thank you. Uh, the Finance Committee's motion is not to adopt Article 11, and I will ask the Chairman of the Finance Committee, Dr. Mulcahy, to make that motion. Is that your motion? Uh, so moved, uh, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Mulcahy. Um, and <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, and. Um, Mr. McLaughlin called the article. Uh, we will hear from the uh, sponsor of the original article first, and I will uh, defer to Mr. Barham. Yes, there's a point of order. Thank you, thank you, John. We, we, we discussed that. Just a moment ago. Yes, Dr. Mulcahy. Um, Mr. Moderator, can I make a, a statement before going to Mr. Barham? Sure. Thank you. I'll promise to be short. Okay, stay, stay, stay. Um, on Article 11, there has been a recent dialogue between the opponents and proponents to work together to find common ground on this issue. Due to the lack of time for the committee to process this arrangement, the committee voted to stay with, the, with, with its original recommendation of not to adopt. The committee hopes that both sides can work together for the benefit of the community at large. So you'll be hearing um, some discussion either way. And I just wanted to give you an update on that. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mulcahy. Mr. Barham? Uh, Mr. Moderator, I defer my comment to Linda Williams. Okay. Ms. Williams, uh, I believe there's five minutes for the proponent of the article. I make a motion to table this matter for further study. Motion to table has been made on the article. That motion is not debatable and requires a two-thirds majority. As Sarah explained earlier, the effect of the motion to table at this point in the meeting uh, will mean that the article uh, will be disposed when the meeting adj adjourns, having taken no action by this meeting, and will not be in effect. So, having said that, uh, as a two-thirds uh, majority is required on this article, and there are a lot of people here, I think, to find out what happens with this article, we're going to go straight to a hand count vote on this. The motion is... The, the, the motion is there, do we need a second for a table? Yes, there is not a second. Do we have a second on the motion to table? Thank you. I'm fairly new at this, so thank you for your help. We're all in this together. The motion uh, on the floor is to table the article, uh, as I said, which will effectively 
dispose of the article at the dissolution of the meeting and uh, requires a two-thirds vote. Teller's ready for a hand count. All those in favor of tabling the motion, please raise your hands. I'm taller than you. Okay. All those opposed to the motion to table the article, please raise your hands and keep them raised until the towers have found you. not to complain to us tomorrow if you are surprised by what may or may not happen in your absence. Um, uh, Mr. Moderator, a uh, point of order. Dr. Could, Mulcahy. On the uh, Finance Committee motion, I'm not quite clear what that means, because our motion was not to adopt originally. Just want to be sure we got that straight. As it is appropriate. This is the motion that we're voting on currently. If the motion doesn't pass, then... Okay, thank you. And, th and this motion takes precedence over any other motion on the floor currently. <laughs> Waiting for the numbers. An another point of order. <laughs> um, well, we understand the motion the table, but it doesn't change the Finance Committee motion of not to adopt. So we should right. cross that out. Well, I, I guess I think I would assume that crossing out Finance Committee means the Finance Committee is. Uh, oh, really? So we want to restore. And then underneath that, that was
This is this is council's input on what it should say. says just motion to table. Yeah. Mr. Stover seemed to have been dawdling in the corner there for a moment. You guys really have to work these things out before you get to the meeting, Catherine. Williams motion to table the article. Yes, 426. No, 68. A two-thirds majority having been voted, the article is tabled. And we're done with it for now. Thank you, Mr. Kopko. I will now recognize the chairman of the Board of Selectmen, for making a final motion to dissolve this special town meeting. Ms. Rogovin, is that your motion? Roll, the, roll credits. All those in, a motion is made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. Motion is adopted unanimously. Thank you.